Welcome back everyone to 10.1 curves defined by parametric equations. We know all the definitions, let's jump right into it with an example. All right, so we have our parametric equations x equals 3 sine of 2t and y equals negative 5 cosine of 2t, t ranges from 0 to pi over 2. We're going to try to find the corresponding Cartesian equation along with plotting it. So when we plot these things, typically the point plotting method is the way to go, so I'm going to choose various values of t and see what happens to x and y uh, when I plug those values of t into them. So when we're going from 0 to pi over 2, kind of we're going to choose our standard unit circle values. And let's get to it. So if I plug in 0 into x, well, x is sine of 2t, so this is going to be 0. 3 times 0 is, of course, 0. When I plug in 0 into y, uh, this is going to give me 1 times negative 5 and so on. So let's go ahead and plug in pi over 6. So pi over 6, now this is sine of really pi over 3, right? Because we're doubling it, sine of 2t here. So sine of pi over 3, well, that's root 3 over 2. OK. How about when I plug uh, pi over 6 into cosine? Well, this is going to be cosine of pi over 3, because again, we're doubling it. So cosine of pi over 3 is going to be 1 half. How about pi over 4? So 3 times and sine of 2 times pi over 4, aka pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. And then negative 5 times cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is the same thing as 0. And then pi over 3. So this is going to be sine, 3 times sine of 2 pi over 3. Sine of 2 pi over 3 is still root 3 over 2. And then when I plug in pi over 3 into my y, right, this is going to be cosine of 2 pi over 3. And cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. And then finally, when I plug in pi over 2, this is going to be have sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0. And then finally, negative 5 times cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So now we can do a pretty good job of sketching this thing. It looks like my y values range from negative 5 to positive 5, and my x values range from 0 to 0, but it looks like the biggest one in there is around 3. So x values go from 0 to 3, y values go from negative 5 to 5. There's my negative 5, so it's 0, negative 5. And then it looks like I'm going to use a calculator here. Uh, don't want to try to approximate this and get it incorrect. So 3 times root 3 over 2. All right, and of course I can do negative 5 halves in my head already. So there's 1, 2, 3. So it's a little bit between 2 and 3, right? 2.59-ish. And negative 2.5. There we go. My next value is 3, 0. And then it looks right around the same value here, but it's now uh, a positive y value. So 2.59-ish, and then positive 2.5, and then finally 0, comma, positive 5. So if I connect these dots, we can see something that looks almost like half of a circle, but it's kind of elongated, right? It's stretched, uh, because I only have really like the radius is 3 here, if I look at the x radius, and then the y radius is like 5 or something. So back in the day, we used to call something like this an ellipse. So I think this is an ellipse. Uh, let's go ahead and try to find the corresponding Cartesian equation. Again, looking at this, I want a way to relate sines and cosines with a nice constant. And so I'm going to use uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 again. But now look, I can solve these things for my sines and cosines by dividing by 3 and negative 5, respectively. 
So I'll remember sine squared of u plus cosine squared of u is equal to 1. And this is true no matter what u is. So in particular, I want to do 2t this time around. right? Sine squared of 2t plus cosine squared of 2t. So long as they're the same value on the inside of sine and cosine, this is a true equation. So now we know sine of 2t is the same thing as x over 3. And cosine of 2t is the same thing as y over negative 5. So square both of those. So I get x squared over 9, y squared over 25. This equals 1. And that is a fine Cartesian equation for the ellipse that we have here. Again, we only have part of the ellipse because of the restriction of t. Uh, but this is definitely part of the ellipse. OK, find the corresponding Cartesian equation for the parametric equations x equals 2 secant of 3t and y equals negative 5 tangent of 3t. So now we don't have to plot these so much. We just want to figure out the corresponding Cartesian equation. So again, just like last time, uh, we should be thinking about this sine squared u plus cosine squared u equals 1 because there was a way to divide by cosine squared and we could relate then secants with tangents. So there is the equation that relates secants with tangents. And again, this is true for any u, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in 3t this time around. So tangent squared of 3t plus 1 is equal to secant squared of 3t. And again, we can make this x over 2 is the same thing as secant of 3t, and y over negative 5 is the same thing as tangent of 3t. So now I go ahead and plug these things in y over negative 5 squared plus 1 is equal to x over 2 quantity squared. And let's go ahead and kind of rearrange these things. I'm going to get 1 alone on this side. And I'm going to write x squared over 4 minus y squared over 25. And for those of you who really, really loved uh, maybe like algebra 2 or something like this, you'll recognize this as a hyperbola. So this is kind of friends with the ellipse and the circle and stuff. Hyperbola. OK, let's go ahead. We have one more example here for you. Parametric equation with y equals x squared minus x plus 3, which starts at 0, 3 when t equals 0 and ends at 3, 9 when t equals 5. So this one's interesting because we're given the Cartesian equation and say, hey, find me a parametric equation that satisfies a few conditions. So with these things, we already have y as a function of x. So in order to get y as a function of t, well, we just need to parameterize x. And once we have a parameter for x, we can just plug that in to this equation. So usually with these things, I usually like to start off with x being nice and linear. I'm going to make it x equals t. And then if I allowed for that, like I said, we just plug in everywhere we see an x, we plug in a t. And that would be a parametrized version of y. But now the only problem is that it may not satisfy these extra conditions. So right, we have to look. It should start at 0, 3 when t equals 0. So when I plug in t equals 0, I indeed get out 0 for x. So that's great. How about the second condition? When I plug in 5 for t, do I get out 3 for x? Not so much, right? Because if I plugged in 5 for t, I would get 5 for x. So this doesn't exactly work out. So I'm going to try to make x be some scalar multiple of t. Then when I plug in 0 for t, I'll still get 0 for x, which is great. But I want to choose this good value of a so that when I plug in 5 for t, I get out 3 for x. Well, of course, I can solve for a in this case and get, hey, a should be 3 fifths. So I'm going to go ahead and try. What if I parameterize x by 3 fifths t? Now when I plug in 0 for t, I still get out 0 for x. So it still satisfies this first condition. And then the second condition, when I plug in 5, I should get out 3 for x. So when I plug in 5 for t, I indeed get 3 for x. So now all of our x values are set. Now how do we parameterize y? Right? Well, this equation up here will no longer be good because x isn't equal to t anymore. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. x is now equal to 3 fifths t. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in 3 fifths t. 
let's go ahead and take a line to simplify this. So I get 9 20 fifths t squared minus 3 fifths t plus 3. And maybe this time around we should be a little bit paranoid, right? We want to make sure when I plug in 0, I should get out 3. And when I plug in 5, I should get out 9. So when I plug in 0, I, of course, do get out 3. Perfect. How about when I plug in 5? When I plug in 5, do I really get out 9? Let's check. So I go for it. I'll plug in 5. So this is going to be 9 20 fifths times 5 squared, which is 25, minus 3 fifths times 5 plus 3. So we get some good cancellation going on here. We get 9 minus 3 plus 3. So that gives me indeed 9. So yes, when I plug in 5, it does give me out 9. So it turns out this is a solution, and there are infinitely many solutions to parametrize our equation, uh, even with the added restrictions of when I plug in 0 for t, I should get out 0, 3, and when I plug in 5 for t, I should get out 3, 9. There are still infinitely many ways to do this. This is kind of the most common and straightforward way. Uh, now it turns out kind of Choosing a linear function for x does not always work when you're trying to parametrize a Cartesian equation, but it is a good technique to start with. All right, and that's going to be the end of 10.1 for us. Go ahead and take a quick break, stretch your legs, do your homework, and I'll see you next time here in 10.2.